Do you think that uh, Daniel Andrews has made the right call here? Yeah, I think he's certainly taken, um, you know, swift action and decisive action. We still don't know how much this is going to damage him, of course. He's he's been Labor leader in that state for a, a decade now, so he, he's been in control when all this branch stacking has gone on. Um, the audit that Jenny Macklin and, and Steve Brax will oversee and should be finalised by November will, you know, further implicate Dan Andrews and Anthony Albanese. They're the leaders of the party. Um, so while they're taking decisive action now, I I think this still has a long way to play out. And it does really raise questions about branch stacking. In general, we've seen a focus from many saying we should be looking if it's happening in the Liberal ranks as well, but this is pretty damning evidence that came out in this report about what's been happening in Victoria for quite some time and how much people would have known that when it was happening. Yeah, and there's still a lot of open questions. You know, will the left faction also be implicated now? Adam Sumirak was obviously a Victorian right um, power broker. And you're right, for, for just how long has this uh, been going on? Um, the idea that there are 16,000 Victorian members and up to a quarter of them um, may have been stacked. I mean, that, that's a, a lot of a lot of people. Um, my colleague Red Brown is reporting today that from here on in, you're going to have to actually sign up your membership online so that it can be scrutinised and tracked. Um, so this will certainly, you know, see a lot of reform within the party. But as to whether you know the party can bring its members and the people with it, uh, I guess is a, a wait and see. Well, we'll be watching very closely. Now, one story that was dominating Parliament yesterday was this mandatory minimum sentencing for child sex offences. Labor does generally have a policy against mandatory sentencing, but they folded on this pretty quickly. Yeah, it was a, a bit of a strange sort of party tactics manoeuvre um, from Labor, although they had signed off on it last week in caucus. Um, so I guess... But those who believe this was a good idea say we needed to show our members um, that we were opposed to mandatory minimum sentencing. They did that on Monday night by trying to amend the government's bill so it carved out um, that quite controversial measure, um, but then made it clear very quickly on Tuesday, oh, OK, we'll fold on that, we'll back down, we'll pass the bill unamended. Uh, that actually frustrated some Labor MPs who said, you know, it, it just didn't help us. It, it gave the government plenty of time to attack Labor um, on mandatory minimum sentencing for the most serious child sex um, offenders. Uh, so a, a weird tactic by Labor, um, you know, we're so far out from the election as to whether it's going to, you know, ha have an impact, probably very minimal. Um, but to just give the government, you know, a good day of, of attacks from Scott Morrison, uh, from Peter Dutton, from Christian Porter to question sort of the morals and ethics of the Labor Party, um, you know, when we're not hearing much from Labor during what is a, a health um, and economic um, crisis, uh, didn't play out well for some Labor MPs. No, you're right. We haven't been hearing much from Labor. They are in this really tough position, aren't they, where at the moment so much pressure is being put on the government for the COVID response and the National Cabinet in particular. So the federal Labor has had a really hard time stepping in. But do you think their attack was also compromised by the fact that this ALP story broke in Victoria yesterday and so many weren't willing to get up and speak on the mandatory sentencing because they were worried about being asked about uh, Victoria? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a good week for Anthony Albanese and his party. I think that was very clear once the 60 Minutes program uh, came to air on Sunday night. Uh, so yes, um, a lot of a lot of concern. But we were about to have a winter break, um, and we won't see these MPs until August. Um, so that'll give them fresh air. Also, a lot of people are are looking uh, for Anthony Byrne, um, the MP uh, whose office these recordings and, and vision of uh, Adam Sumurek were taken in. Um, now, he said yesterday he had no comment to make um, as to, you know, knowledge of, of these recordings. It's alleged that perhaps one of his staffers um, was involved. Um, interestingly, we haven't really seen Anthony Byrne um, since uh, 60 Minutes aired on, on Sunday night. So I think as many of them as possible, in particular Anthony Byrne, will be keeping their heads down. 
Can't keep it down forever. And just finally, borders are the big discussion at the moment. There could be even court action against Queensland and WA about keeping the borders shut. What do you think the prospects of that holding up will be? Well, it's interesting because the government has intervened in these High Court cases and Scott Morrison actually told the Premiers on Friday at National Cabinet that the government, the federal government, believed those states with border closures, in fact, it was unconstitutional. Now, we may actually have the reopening of some of those borders while this High Court case is ongoing. So, you know, will the plaintiffs decide to pull their case um, if... if the borders actually reopen or do they believe the borders have been uh, in place, the closures have been in place for so long um, and the damage so great to their business that they still want to pursue damages um, and, and think they might be able to do that through the High Court. Um, obviously, South Australia yesterday announcing it would let uh, some residents from some states come in, uh, not Victoria and New South Wales, of course. So a sort of staggered reopening um, and a, a lot of angst about that today. The government wants all borders reopened. We possibly will get that in July, but it looks like WA could still be further off than that.